Hi, there are lots of new and exciting treatments for epilepsy and epilepsy surgery with new technologies using laser ablation to treat epilepsy, especially the refractory cases. Today, we'll give you all you need to know about the epilepsy surgery using laser ablation. Laser ablation or laser interstitial thermal therapy, LET therapy, is a less invasive procedure that uses a laser probe. Usually, it's the size of a pencil tab and it is inserted into the skull, very, very tiny hole, a few minutes two to three millimeters and this will go into the brain under MRI guidance and then we will create some heat inside the brain in that area in a very controlled fashion to cause uh, damage to a very small areas of the brain to perform the surgery instead of opening the skull and doing the resection surgery by itself. Definitely it's a very exciting uh, area to be in and a very exciting new technology. Laser was used before for other treatments uh, in the body like uh, doing liver uh, surgeries and other body organs and then we started using it in the brain mostly for epilepsy surgery and for brain tumors. Who is the best candidate for laser epilepsy surgery? It is very important to know that uh, laser is a surgical treatment and we need to choose carefully those patients who have a surgically treated epilepsy and uh, refractory epilepsy. Patients have to be refractory means that they tried and could and did not improve after two or more anti-seizure medications and we do epilepsy evaluation for them and we prove that they have seizures and epilepsy and they're all coming from one area of the brain and we can see a scar in the brain and we assume that the seizures are coming from that scar and instead of taking it surgically we can ablate it through laser. I know that lots of people think of a laser as like that miraculous uh, uh, light that can cure all diseases. I know like some people treat laser as like for beauty or for changes but this is not the case with epilepsy. We have to be really careful and, and choose the patients very carefully. The most important in indication for laser ablation is patients with mesial temporal sclerosis which is a part of epilepsy in the temporal lobe there is a scar in the mesial temporal lobe like all the way inside the temporal lobe in the hippocampus and this is usually caused by a febrile seizure or just kind of like a long status epilepticus or any other causes and if we see that scar the laser probe is exactly uh, perfect for that procedure and we can take it out surgically instead of opening the skull and going through the temporal lobe which can cause issues going through that area. Other good candidates for uh, laser surgery is patients who have deep sources of epilepsy such as all the way in the mesial frontal lobe or in the hypothalamus. There is a famous condition called hypothalamic hamartoma. You remember in prison break uh, Michael Schofield had hypothalamus hamartoma as a uh, large lesion in his hypothalamus and they did surgery for him. It uh, was in the temporal lobe and in the hypothalamus and you know he had all all the memories during the surgery done. And sometimes we can perform uh, uh, corbus callosotomy, which is a procedure we used to uh, separate the both hemispheres in patients who have severe epilepsy and falls and drop attacks. We can use laser ablation to perform this uh, surgery now. See that not in, in other cases, we cannot perform laser ablation for if it's like a large lesion or there is some um, uh, multiple areas of the brain that needs to be uh, resected or we, we the surgery through laser should not be with every case of uh, epilepsy surgery. It is only with specific and carefully chosen patients. What is the success rate of laser ablation in epilepsy? Well, the success rate depends a lot on the type of procedure that we perform on types of epilepsy. So the, the best success is in the mesial temporal sclerosis can be between 50 to 60 percent and the complete uh, uh, and in uh, cases of uh, uh, hypothalamus hamartoma, the, the, the success rate is even higher. So it is very, very important to to know what type of surgery we have. Let me know down in the comments if you prefer to do laser ablation or conventional surgery and why. The complications of uh, this uh, laser ablation surgery is very, very, very small and it is generally very safe and because it's less invasive, complications would be infection, bleeding, all of that, which is really, really small. The important thing is that laser ablation is performed under MRI guidance. So we have an intraoperative MRI uh, machine, MRI machine that is inside the uh, operating 
waiting room. So we put that uh, laser inside the, the brain and then we do live thermography, which means that the brain MRI will start imaging as we do the laser ablation and it will give us the heat map the, directly on live from the procedure uh, place. And then we will decide how long to keep it on and what is the temperature and we'll create the heat map. And then we we'll start pulling it back and do ablation, pull it back, do ablation. So that's it's a very, very precise accuracy. And because of that, it is a very expensive procedure because it needs this complicated and highly advanced technology of intraoperative MRI and, and the laser technology. That's why it is limited and it is not available worldwide or in all the centers. And it is mostly in highly uh, advanced and academic and referral centers. However, with advancement of technology, it will be available uh, everywhere, hopefully in the near future. I see some hospitals are creative in using the intraoperative MRI of this expensive machine. It can reach up to between six to eight million dollars for the MRI machine itself other than the OR equipment and operating room. So it is, a, yes, it's an expensive procedure and, and things, but usually we do other things with this technology. So we do brain tumor surgeries and we do other uh, ablations. And also we use the uh, intraoperative MRI for, for like, for example, in brain tumors, we take out the brain tumor, we do uh, an MRI right there in, during the procedure so that we can see if we did take the tumor completely or not, which helps a lot with the better outcome instead of closing everything, going back and do the MRI later and then find out that we did not take the whole, uh, the whole tumor out and then we have to do another surgery. And some cases they do even like uh, uh, imperforated anus surgery uh, by doing a brain MRI. What if I don't have access to laser surgery? We should remember that laser ablation and laser surgery is an alternative to epilepsy surgery and it is done through a less invasive way. However, if you are a perfect epilepsy surgery candidate, we should do the epilepsy surgery no matter what is the technique and, and all the epilepsy surgeries are successful and generally very safe as we explained in the epilepsy surgery series. And now there are more exciting treatments for epilepsy and I reviewed the most exciting treatments for epilepsy this year and the recent advancements in medications and non-medications uh, treatments all in this video and stay healthy and see you in the next one. Salam.